good morning to everybody. I'm a little apologize for delaying the morning. I would like to welcome you for, in the Belgrade and uh, I wish you a pleasant stay here. I'm also very thankful to organizers to call me for providing certain number of lectures in this meeting because I think that cooperation with the patients, uh, patients and their association is of great importance in any long-term treatment. I would like to talk about things, uh, what we learned in uh, previous 10 years or 12 years of treating patients with CML, with TKIs, and in general with our expertise over almost 20 years with CML patients. Uh, I would like to, uh, to talk a little bit about why we are talking about resources in Europe. Maybe, uh, many of you are coming from countries with much poor uh, GNP, but uh, Serbia is a country with uh, quite old population. It's not so, not so uh, large country. Uh, it, we have only 7 million of inhabitants, and we have a quite, uh, re let's say, reasonable, reasonable uh, GNP. It's very similar to China, to some Latin American countries. But uh, health investment is uh, something we are very proud and we are uh, frightening about. Well, you're here at the beginning of the May. First of May is working work, uh, day of work, a holiday for communism, but also a holiday for many workers. One of the consequences of the May happenings 100 years ago is the social chart of Europe and also health insurance. So we are, when you are talking about uh, treatment of malignant diseases, we must stress that good insurance is the only treatment for such conditions. We are investing about 6 to 8% of uh, GNP in health. That means 250 to 300 uh, per uh, head in the country. And we have very centralized system uh, inherited from the previous times, but it's a public health insurance fund which covers almost everything in health. Only 2% is by payment by patient themselves and private insurances because they have started, but they're not doing anything except uh, regular follow-up or uh, some kind of systematic uh, examinations for the patients. Well, our system is very similar to a system maybe you, you are more familiar, like UK uh, uh, NHS system, which is available in uh, Australia, and Canada, in many African countries as well, to a certain extent. And uh, unfortunately, we do not have some special regulator called NICE, which can uh, be a body which can address uh, the utility and uh, effectiveness of certain drugs. By our constitution, by our laws, oncology and hematology care in Serbia is free of charge. It's ultimate basic insurance. And uh, it is uh, available for all citizens with uh, C diagnosis. That means they have a malignant diagnosis or uh, C uh, ICD classification. Uh, nevertheless, they have insurance. They have uh, insurance paid by their employers or not. They have a right to be treated. We have a consequence from that. The CML treatment is very centralized. We have four university hospitals covering all area of the country. Sorry. And uh, we have a military medical academy, which is only available for the civilians for stem cell grafting. We have two level approval of the treatment. One is at the institutional board level, and the second at the Republic Healthcare Fund. And it was a consequence of introduction of a very expensive treatment, like treatment with TKIs. We also have something which is good and which is bad. This is a central funded treatment. Drug is not reimbursed, drug is bought directly and dispatched to the hospitals by the Republic Health Fund and uh, purchased by direct procurement uh, for, uh, or tender procedure by the Republic Fund. We have two drugs. We have imatinib, now generic, and nilotinib as a second line. And the average incidence of CML in Serbia is about one patient per 100,000 adult persons, meaning that we have about 50 to 60 per, uh, patients with CML a year. Well, we started our treatment uh, of CML with uh, TKIs very early, from July 2001, just several months after first uh, published data of a large series, we have started uh, treatment. Unfortunately, at that time, uh, the drug was uh, purchased by the patients or by the relatives and then reimbursed by the health insurance, and we used the registration on that time, uh, patients in blast phase and accelerated phase. Unfortunately, among uh, cert certain number of eight to nine patients, only one survived to BMT, and the other one is now on a long-term treatment with various TKIs. Well, uh, in 2003, after 
let's say, initial failure because of those patients, we have started to put some patients on special fund at the ministry level. And from university centers, we treated 13 patients, and nine of them are still alive, but two are alive only with uh, stem cell grafting. Our first good experience with the uh, treatment of TKI is a uh, clinical trial led by Central European Leukemia Study Group in Austria, which opened us uh, ability to treat patients in early chronic phase or, uh, let's say, middle chronic phase, uh, second line treatment. And we included 32 of 50 patients screened. And in the moment, 22 of those patients, or roughly 70%, you will see that percentage in many presentations uh, in real data are still alive and they're still on their treatment. And we were very happy with that. Well, it led us to persuade people from the health fund that we need a very expensive drug, that we need a very efficient drug, and that we need a drug which can control uncurable malignant disease like CML. Because CML is a kind of a bomb which may explode if you're not treating them well. We succeeded in that uh, task uh, in the uh, Balkan area in 2006 uh, uh, by obtaining uh, imatinib regularly by health insurance fund as a first line treatment in patients with chronic phases, chronic phase, but with some limitations. And we treated uh, in the last seven years about 300 people in all institutions in Serbia, and almost half are coming from my central clinical center of Serbia. Who are our patients? Who how we treat them? Well, it's a very intriguing question because it will arise many questions uh, on different sides. But we have the, uh, some kind of uh, limitations from the health fund. They asked us which who, who are the patients who will have the best benefit from the treatment and how we'll manage them. them. We then decided to treat patients in the chronic phase, not patients in accelerated or plastic phases. They're receiving different treatment and they are sent to the stem cell grafting if we have the donor. Just to remind you, we have the average age of 42, and also we have a very small number of children, so the uh, number of potential donors are sparse. Well, we have uh, about slightly predominance of males. We have something not similar to other European countries. We have intermediate and high SOCL score quite higher, about 5 to 10 percent to other overload data, and in general, CML is disease of middle age or elderly people. The most of our patients are in fifth or sixth decade of their life. Just to remind you, average life expectancy in Serbia is 71 for uh, one year for men and 76 years for female. What we have? We have about 10% of patients diagnosed with accelerated and blast phase. We have 43 patients with a very huge, very large number of white blood cells. We have 40% with elevated platelets and diagnosis, which means uh, uh, slightly worse prognosis. And also we have more than half of patients with enlarged spleens. Our patients are coming to their doctors in time they are uh, brought by the family, not by themselves, in, in majority. How we treat patients? Well, patients who are uh, in an accelerated phase and plastic phase receive different treatment. But patients treated uh, with, uh, in chronic phase are divided into two groups. Group of 73% of patients are treated with TKI. Imatinib first line, and those patients are much healthier. They have no disease at all, or just only hypertension, or some slight cardiovascular and other problems. But the group of the patient treated with hydroxyurea is much more controversial. But on the other side, those patients are, many of them are uh, of advanced age. Two halves, uh, two thirds is over the 70. And just to think about uh, average life expectancy. Moreover, they have hypertension for a long time, very, very, very often very uncontrolled, cardiovascular and cerebrovascular diseases. They have diabetes and their neoplasms. In a cohort of uh, patients reported to UTOS registry, we, as we are a member of uh, ELAN uh, registry, uh, from those 23 patients, seven already died within two years, no, not from CML. So our first successful and I must say a good uh, approach to organize treatment is introduction of our national guidelines or recommendations. They're based on uh, first ELN recommendations from 2006, but it was uh, wisely prepared and covered with ELN 2009 uh, proposals as well. We have imatinib for all patients in the chronic phase, but without severe uh, disease, and we have a certain process of triage you can see from the previous slide. 
we introduced cytogenetic evaluation set three times and then year after, and uh, it was uh, our standard of care until this year. Uh, we also managed to use uh, ELN suboptimal and failure criteria as a, as a criteria for switch or uh, at those escalation of a drug. And I must proudly say that we are uh, among several countries in the region which have the dose escalation uh, very, very uh, early in uh, treatment decision. Unfortunately, uh, most, powerful tool, most powerful tool for evaluation of CML, uh, real-time PCR, was introduced in 2008, but very slowly, because we have a lack of understanding from people uh, providing funds, especially in health insurance, because it was a part of a hospital budget. Well, how we treat patients and how it looks like. We are gathering patients, about 111 patients from my institution, with follow-up more than two years. That means very stable patient to be sure what's happening. And we can see that almost 65% have a complete cytogenetic response at six months. And 79% of patients have uh, achieved better response at one year. But this belongs to uh, special things we presented that this year, we will present this year in uh, ECHA meeting, that the patient to achieving complete cytogenetic response, which is the main strong criteria in the new ELN, classific uh, new ELN, uh, ELN guidelines, uh, have a, the excellent survival of almost 90%. I do not have a slide in a moment. But our survival of the whole cohort of the patient treated with imatinib uh, directly first line uh, within six months from diagnosis uh, with uh, those uh, escalation in case of failure or switching to nilotinib revealed us that almost 87% of patients are alive nowadays about almost 10 years. So we think that our treatment schedule and our uh, goal to achieve the good responses of our patients are uh, quite good because uh, only 10, 10 patients died of CML and five patients died out of CML. That means every patient dying uh, from other reason from the point of patient is uh, better than on drawing from CML from malignant disease. But for us, it's a kind of failure of our strategy because uh, we think that uh, in certain extent, in certain extent uh, such a drug is waste, especially for, such, for a long time. We have uh, uh, performed a new hope for our patients and our patients uh, are very willing to follow us as well. We created a new guidelines. Uh, we moved a little bit more forward because of ELN guidelines. Uh, and based on ELN 2013, we created new guidelines with uh, imatinib as a first line. Current, currently is a generic form, and I will talk uh, at the evening about it. We have made a proposal to health insurance fund, fund and we still do not have the response that nilotinib should be used in patients with uh, intermediate and high-risk so-called, especially in younger ones, because of possible idea of discontinuation treatment after certain uh, certain goal to be achieved. We switched and shortened cytogenetics to lucky of our patients. We just uh, use cytogenetics at six and 12 months, and then every second year, and we're trying to, pu to put uh, PCR on the first place, on a better place for evaluation, and to substitute uh, the cytogenetics in the future with PCR. But we still believe that uh, early evaluation of cytogenetics is essential, especially because patients may have additional cytogenetic aberrations, which should be followed much firmly, and we have a different biology of the disease in that moment. But we are living in a country in turmoil. We have a lot of economical problems, and there are a lot of ifs. If there is a decline of our sparse resources, or when we have uh, limits in the health insurance. I would like to say that treatment of CML without insurance is very painful business, and I think it's not real treatment. It's just uh, providing some uh, hope for the patients, but not, in many cases, uh, a real one. Uh, it is very essential for the doctors to choose the excellent patients, not to treat all the patients uh, frontline if, if they have no resources and we are learning how to do that. 
We would like to put the pressure on insurance or government to buy imatinib in enough quantities, especially regular imatinib, because uh, we faced uh, sometimes problems with our insurance funds, with our procurement uh, and tender procedures. They are uh, long-lasting. Uh, uh, sometimes patients are lacking the uh, drugs for certain small times, like two, three days, but it can be sometimes two weeks. Individual drug purchase by the patient is not a good option. We have seen that by the patient, but we have a poor compliance in some patients, especially because younger patients with CML in chronic phase are in good health. And sometimes, even they are receiving drug free of charge, they have in mind that they can skip a dose. ALN recommendations, as we see those recommendations, uh, new ones and the uh, all ones are excellent guidelines, excellent recommendations for following up the treatment. But uh, we believe that uh, certain slight modification of, without changing the meaning of those recommendations to local settings, it would be of great importance. What to do if you do not have a PCR? We, for almost 10 years, we do not have a PCR. Well, cytogenetic can be substituted, unfortunately, for the patients, but it's, uh, it's, it offers excellent uh, results, excellent uh, information for the doctors. If you do not have a cytogenetic as well, like uh, in, in some undeveloped countries, then in that case, you as a doctor, you will be in a problem, but also your patient. Well, from that point, patients doing well at six months, they have excellent, better survival, they have an excellent, excellent lack of progression, and we believe that uh, the crucial cytogenetics, if you do not have a PCR at three months, or at three months at six months, would be cytogenetic at, uh, at uh, six months, and we presented that for EHA meeting this year. What next? How to manage patients without second line? Well, we manage patients for a long time, for almost three years, without second-line treatment. We escalate imatinib. Uh, the maximum dose of imatinib is 1,600 1, uh, performed by Italian group in 2005. And it works, but side effects are much more common and much more uh, intolerable. But uh, dose escalation could be good value because in our group, about 40% of patients responded to escalated treatment, especially because we have idea better than nothing. And patients with less than 35% Philadelphia chromosome in their stereotype responded much better than others. But prim prim primary resistant patients, they're not responding to first line and even to dose escalation. They may respond to certain short time and then they will lose their, their uh, response. What uh, if we have the situation we have now to have a limited uh, quantity of second line treatment? Well, to put the pressure through the patients and put the pressure from the medical side to insurance, to negotiate with the system, with the supplier, and uh, I think that it's very wise to have also media on our side because we're treating CML leukemia. We're trying to increase also medical knowledge, not only to doctors treating CML. <laughs> In Serbia, they are almost all experts because they're treating at least 20, 30 patients in a single, single institution. But also, we want to uh, um, increase the knowledge of our people from the patient advocacy group and our people uh, from the labs, because this, uh, this is the only possibility to have the real addressment of uh, understanding of medical decisions needed for such a treatment. Well, I welcome you again to Belgrade, and thank you very much. I'm open for questions. Thank you, Professor Bogdanovich, and I open the session for questions. Okay, let me ask. Uh, how do you, as a doctor, uh, react or give, do something to the authorities to tell them that you do not have appropriate treatment for the patients? What do you do? Well, uh, first of all, it's a problem with authorities. Especially authorities in uh, Eastern, Eastern European countries are quite deaf to their people. Like many other governments uh, outside the uh, systems with a long-lasting democracy when they have uh, to think about the vote. Uh, very, it's very hard to persuade people from uh, something bureaucratic institution like uh, health insurance fund. They have, they have their own goals, they have uh, to, sh to 
why the, all that money to all things in medical system. Sometimes it's very wise to, think, uh, to talk with them, to provide them the idea that uh, CML treatment is uh, expensive, but it's very life-saving and it's very, and it's very uh, nice to be proud that you have a good uh, health system for CML. Because that's the first leukemia. I'm dealing with leukemia for almost 25 years nowadays. Uh, first leukemia which can be cured by the medical means on the long term. Acute leukemia is much more fatal disease and the resources uh, uh, spent for acute leukemia uh, are returning only to small fraction of patients in CML. Such resources are much uh, uh, higher, or maybe not higher, uh, by total amount of money. But uh, they are providing much more better outcome to many patients. Uh, it's, very, it's very tough. We needed almost seven years of negotiations uh, through various bodies, especially within the uh, Health Insurance Fund, to pursue them for imatinib. We were, uh, we were faced by uh, a rapid switch to generic drug because of the price two years ago. First country in Europe with generic drugs were Serbia. And uh, we did a lot of things uh, to persuade people from the health fund. Unfortunately, we believe in that moment that we still do not have understanding. We can persuade them by direct uh, talks, by presenting them uh, results. Uh, but uh, for them, 70% uh, is quite high, and they say, well, your 70% the patients are still alive and very well. What do you need more? You're treating leukemia. Well, it looks like uh, from them, uh, because for them, the only costs for the patients are when the patients are not paying or they are not paying their debts. That's a, that's a course, uh, course of uh, centralized insurance. But on the other side, if you want to have a participation of the patients uh, buying their drugs or participating in their drugs as uh, the policy in some European countries, uh, you have a problem uh, with the uh, compliance of the patient. You will, you will face uh, ideas that the patient can decrease drug uh, themselves. That's, uh, that's, a, that's a point we don't like to, uh, to have from our patients. We know that uh, some of our patients have a bad compliance, uh, especially uh, they're trying to spare drug uh, for some uh, bad days when they have uh, problems with uh, regular supplies. And uh, we, we tried with uh, companies supplying drugs, especially nowadays uh, with the generic drug, which is uh, less expensive, to, have, uh, the, to uh, send their patient, our patients to buy directly in special pharmacies uh, one box of the, of the drug to overcome that, not to shrink the dose. Because uh, reduction of the dose by the patient, which is uncontrolled, should be dangerous. I think that uh, a certain uh, lack of response or probably loss of response uh, we have occurred, uh, we have seen uh, in two years or three years ago, should be probably be uh, due to those problems with the regular supply. And uh, we should put the pressure on the media, we should put pressure on the health fund uh, by writing, by calling them, by asking the uh, patient advocacy group also to call the patient, to call the, the fund, uh, to persuade them to have the regular supplies. What to do next? We would like to have it, uh, things better, we would like to have uh, treatment better. That means uh, also that we have a budget for that. Nobody is asking doctors for budget, unfortunately, in this country. Doctors are uh, people who will treat patients, who will talk with patients, and our politicians, and I must say people from the health fund, are a little bit uh, reluctant to voice of the people. Yes, please. Um, Cheryl from Canada. I wanted to ask you, the results that you showed us today with imatinib in Serbia, with that with the branded imatinib, or is it with branded. your generic? Branded. Okay. This is a branded uh, cut off two years ago, mm -hmm. uh, in time when we have a problem with uh, drug supply, and we have decided to cut the data just to avoid some uh, problems with, which may arise from, uh, uh, from the supply and you will see the, at the end of the day a lecture about the generic form. So you will probably be interested also in that. So quick question on the generic form. What, um, which generic uh, imatinib will, do you have? I will have? answer at the evening, okay? Okay. Because I have the lecture about it. Okay. Thank you. Giora. 
I'm sorry, I didn't understand why are you using hydroxia on uh, CML patients, because we saw many data that uh, there is no limit regarding the age of patients who are using imatinib, and imatinib can be used almost at any age, even what we call uh, advanced age patients. Uh, so what was the reasoning of using hydroxia? And if you need to use another drug because of cost, why not interferon? Well, several, several, several things uh, especially. First of all, uh, maybe you don't be afraid, uh, I'm not Jesus to use one bread for 1,000 uh, people. So the quantities of imatinib at the beginning was very limited and the funds for that was limited on the number of patients of uh, 30 to 40 a year. So we should be very careful in uh, introducing the patients, uh, especially that's the reason for having the second level decision under the Public Health Fund. Uh, moreover, uh, we discussed after five to six years with the health insurance who are the patients who will they have the best uh, benefit of the drug because they decided not to pay anything for, uh, uh, let's say, palliative treatment of the patients. Uh, in, interferon uh, was used in Serbia during the period of 90s and we have a lot of problems in obtaining enough interferon. Interferon is not a cheap drug. Interferon is with price about half of the metanib, branded one. Uh, especially elderly people, especially people with, uh, let's say, age of 50, 60, are not tolerating interferon in doses of 6 million and above with, uh, without problem. Lesser doses are not effective, so they're just simply like it's hydroxyurea, doses of 3 million or less than 3 million. And uh, we just simply uh, have the possibility to negotiate with the health fund. The decision was, uh, in the beginning, was political, but we forced to have a certain kind of selection or triage, whatever you want. And uh, the policy is uh, when you have someone with uh, severe cardiac, uh, cardiovascular disease or have two strokes, have diabetes uncontrolled, uh, the life expectancy of a such a patient is uh, less than five years. And the chronic phase is lasting four, four to five years. And uh, our decision concerning that was decision by the medical doctor who needs to shrink uh, and to expand uh, its abilities to maximize the effort to our patients. And luckily, I must say, from my house, but for also for other for our hospitals in the country, that uh, among those 23 you have seen, seven died, but not from, none from CML. Well, that's something, uh, something which could be discussed as a kind of uh, wasting resources. Unfortunately, it looks very uh, cruel, but uh, it's the way we are looking. It's better to treat patients with imatinib, with nilotinib, if they uh, have a good lifespan, good quality of life, good future, not to waste a drug to, uh, to a lady who will die from stroke for a year, unfortunately. That's a kind of necessity in a situation we have and we are facing every day. It's a shortening of the funds for uh, specialty drugs. Doctor, a question on, on to drug. Sorry? A question on access to, drug, uh, to, to TKI. You mentioned one of the action items is to put pressure on the insurance uh, company. Um, yes. Can you tell us uh, in Serbia, what is the uh, maximum reimbursement by health insurance scheme and uh, the, the, how expensive is the uh, policy premium? Well, okay. Uh, first of all, as I told in the beginning, we have the full insurance for the hematology. We have no reimbursement. That means drugs are bought by directly by the health fund. All hematological care is paid directly from the central procurement from the uh, Republic Fund. There is no any patient uh, uh, participation in treatment yes. if the treatment is allowed by the fund. Unfortunately, our uh, drug acts are not allowing off-label use of the drugs. They are not allowing uh, different diagnosis from the registered at the agency, and they are very strict. Sometimes we have a problem with uh, so-called orphan diseases because uh, we, have, we do not have a trials. For imatinib, central procurement is performed twice a year or once a year by the Republic Health Fund. We have no any simple connection with that procedure that was fully administrative. They are buying the quantity of a drug according to projections and our projections of the needs for the next year. 
It's also the same with nilotinib. And uh, health insurance fund uh, on that kind of uh, purchase can negotiate with the companies in that procedures according to law uh, about the price. The official price uh, of a drug obtained by the health insurance fund is much less after that uh, than the official price written in the papers, written in the official maximum price. Because the company uh, would like to negotiate with the fund to obtain uh, enough quantity. The re real price, it's not it's, uh, official, but I uh, know that it's about six, 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 something like five, six hundred euros per box, something like that, but on the purchase of 2,000, 3,000 boxes of imatinib in the moment. So we, uh, our, our patients do not have reimbursement, they have 100% reimbursement, and unfortunately we have a lot of business because of that. Uh, our patients are receiving drugs from doctors, from university hospitals, you have seen four of them, uh, and every month patients should come to the hospital for a short visit. They have a blood count at least, uh, or some other evaluation in, if needed, and they receive their package of a drug for the next month. Unfortunately, we are not allowed to provide more than one package per patient or one monthly dose for patient escalation. That means I, cannot, I, can, I can always have to manage patients going somewhere to holidays. I have to always uh, think that someone may or may not come on the requested date to receive their drug. It's a lot of burden because in my hospital, uh, university, uh, university Clinical Center, we are uh, in the present uh, dispatching more than 150 doses of TKIs to patients every month, and we have a lot of paperwork for that.